Hey everyone, my name is Nick, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this pretty simple water reflection effect. So you don't actually need any code to get this effect working. Um, so you can see some shaders are being used here. You don't actually need any shaders to get the reflection effect working, uh, and I'll show you how to do that, but I am using some shaders just to make it a bit cooler to look at. And I will show you where I got those and how to use those as well. It's very simple. Um, shouldn't take too long, and it's a cool effect to get in your game, and uh, hopefully you can find some use for it. So let's take a look at how I did this. So for this tutorial, I'm using the same setup as my previous tutorials, um, which I will link in the description. But basically, I have a tile map, have my player scene here, which is just a kinematic body 2D, with a sprite and a collision shape, and I have a few sort of objects that the camera will attach to when the player gets close, um, and that's just a static body 2D with a collision shape. So pretty simple setup. Uh, you don't have to use a tile map. Um, you just want to make sure that you have a ground texture, whatever you're using, that has some transparency in it um, so that you can actually see through it. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is actually make our little sort of transparent area here, and this will be our pond, or our little body of water. There we go. Save that. I'm going to go to my player character, and whatever sprite or setup you're using to sort of uh, represent the body or whatever it is, um, object that you want to actually create a reflection for, you just want to duplicate that texture or that sprite and I'm going to rename this let's call it reflection I'm going to put it behind the uh, one that's going to be upright and then for that one I'm going to go to transform and then flip the y-axis I'm going to get my move tool and just move it down to where it looks like a reflection so I also want to decrease the alpha channel, or opacity basically, uh, over in modulate, um, and that's going to make it look a little better. So we'll save that, go back to main, and you can kind of see that it looks like a reflection already. So if I hit play here, you can kind of see that the effect is pretty simple. So obviously it's not fully working because we want to make sure it's behind the ground that you can see and only visible when it's on top of the transparent pixels or rather visible through the transparent pixels. So to make sure the reflection effect only shows up when it's sort of visible through the transparent pixels we're going to change um, some of the layer information. So we're going to go back to our player scene to the reflection and under Z index we're going to set the Z index to negative 1. And this is going to put it behind any layers that are on 0 or higher. So now, when we go back to main, you can't see it. So if I hit play again, now when I come down to where my transparent pixels are, um, to wherever the sort of hole in the texture is, you can see that the reflection is negative 1 Z, in Z indexed behind the ground texture. But because these pixels are transparent, you can still see the little flipped sprite. And that's pretty much it. The rest of the effect is just making it look more convincing. Um, so you want to make sure that you pay attention to what Z index your textures and objects and things like that are on. Um, in case you walk to the wrong place and it ends up looking like there's a reflection where you don't want there to be one. Uh, but so now that we have the basic effect, uh, let's actually add some things to it to make it a bit more convincing. So one of the things I want to do, actually first I'm going to move my player down here so we can see it. Um, I want to give the little pool or whatever this is some sort of texture. So I actually got a space texture here that we can use. I'll just drag that onto the scene so that ends up being a sprite, um, and I'm going to put it behind my tile map in the uh, tree order. So whatever you're using, if it's just a um, 
sort of large texture for the ground or if you're using a tile map, you just want to make sure that whatever texture you're using to appear as the water's surface um, is behind whatever texture or tile map you're using for the ground. So in this case, you can kind of see that the reflection from the player is behind that texture. So we're going to adjust the Z index of the water surface texture as well. So I want to set this to anything that is behind the player's reflection texture. So the reflection texture is negative one. So I'm going to set the Z index of my little water surface texture to negative one or a lower number, negative two, anything that works. Um, I'm also going to resize this texture a little bit, I think, just to make it fill the space. And there we go. So when I hit play, it now looks like this little pool is reflecting our player's texture. And that's the reflection effect. One thing we're going to do is add some sort of shaders to it, but you don't have to use shaders or code to complete this effect. Um, but shaders do make it look much better, so let's see what we can find. So I will put a link to this shader in the description. Um, it basically took me a few minutes of Googling to find something that looked kind of cool. Uh, but for my water surface texture, which is this base image here, I'm going to go to Material, New Shader Material, click that, then Add New Shader, click it to open up, and then here we go. I'm just going to paste in the shader that I found. Save that, and there we go. So it might look a bit different depending on what texture you're using for your water. Um, you probably want to make sure your texture has some different values or different high levels of contrast in the colors um, just to get the effect to show up a bit better. But that looks pretty good on this. And we can go into the shader parameters and uh, sort of mess around with anything that we see. But that looks great. Um, I'm going to leave it that for now. One more thing I want to do is add some sort of ripple effect to the player. Uh, or rather the player's reflection, because the player's reflection looks pretty static and unmoving at the moment. Um, so I'm going to come to my player scene, to the texture I'm using as the reflection, and we're going to add another shader. And I will link this one in the description as well. But this is a, a shader that I like using um, and have used before. It's basically a wind shader, uh, but it's going to make it look like our reflection is sort of bouncing along with the waves. So I'm going to come to Material new shader, new shader, open that up, and paste this shader as well. I'm going to save that. I'll set the maximum strength to 0.25, set the distortion all the way up, set the speed a bit higher. Well, let's go with the 3 there. And you can always, of course, play around with these and get them looking however you like. Um, I think I'm going to leave it at that. So I'm going to save that. And we come back to main here. And there we go. So let me hit play. We now have our completed little reflection pool. And you don't have to use shaders. Obviously, they do make everything look better. <laughs> um, and it's pretty easy to find some shaders and copy and paste them in there. Uh, so you can find whatever you like and use them there, of course. But uh, that is the effect. Um, really simple. Don't actually need any code to get it to work. And I uh, hope you like that. And I hope you can put it to use in whatever game you're making. So uh, thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks again.